Okay, seeing that it's uh, 7 o'clock, I'm going to uh, open the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, meeting of uh, May 3rd, 2021. Uh, in attendance, uh, we have uh, myself, Kasai Nazarella, uh, Peter Posselin, uh, Bob Durgan, Jerry Joy, and uh, Alana uh, Snow is with us, and we'll be joined later on by the uh, alternate uh, uh, Dan Bosari. Okay. Alana, we have any uh, new business that we want to open up with first before we, uh, we still have a couple minutes before our first hearing? Um, you could do the bills. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do them. I have one, two, three, four, five uh, bills uh, from uh, Express Newspaper for 420. Oh, there they are right there, total. 84, 84 each. Uh, I'll accept a motion to uh, uh, pay the bills uh, for the invoice 12413. Somebody could make a motion. I'll make a motion that we uh, pay the bills as presented. Thank you. So we have a motion from Jerry. Do I have a second? I'm sorry. Yep, second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Uh, Seeing that we're doing the Zoom meeting, uh, I'll go by a uh, voice vote. Uh, Kasai? Yes. Peter? Yes. Uh, Bob? Yes. Uh, Jerry? Yes. Oh, yes, it passes. Alani, uh, I'll be in probably within the next day or so to come in and, uh, and sign them off. Do you need them signed off? Alana? Yes. Yep. Yes, please. Okay. And we have a second invoice here from uh, Amazon Capital Services for the total of uh, $59.99. Do I have a motion to uh, accept the invoice and pay that invoice uh, for the total of $59.99? Make a motion to uh, accept and pay the invoice from Amazon for $59.99. And do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, again, uh, the voice vote, uh, Saya? Yes. Pete? Yes. Bob? Yes. Uh, Jerry? Yes. And myself? Yes, that passes. Uh, five zero zero. Okay. Oh, uh, also, uh, Alana, what do we need? Do you have a uh, sign-in sheet for the uh, uh, Town of Halifax uh, sexual harassment policy? You're going to need the members to come in and sign off on? Yes, please. I will have that in the office, so whenever possible. All right. Hey, Alana, as long as we're on the subject, do you ever get those uh, key fobs for the uh, for the members? None for the members. I was the only one um, to get one so far. Scott right. said that hopefully that will be coming soon. Yeah, I thought Scott said he had them, so uh, well, we'll check with him and get a hold of the members that could swing by and, and uh, pick one up. Sign out, sign out for it. Sounds good. Uh, all righty. Well, seeing that I have uh, 705 on my watch here, we'll start off on the uh, first uh, petition number 933. Uh, the Halifax Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on, on Monday, 2021. Today's date, May 3rd, at 7.05 p.m. via Zoom on the application by JSC LLC for a special permit and variances to build a garage building for parking to be located at 311 to 313 Plymouth Street in Halifax, Mass, 02338. The property is owned by JSC LLC of 311 Plymouth Street, Halifax, Mass, 02338. On <laughs> map 63, lot 63-19-0. Title reference uh, 39948, page 48. The applicant is seeking a special permit to construct a garage building for parking located in the business zone in accordance with the town of Halifax zoning bylaws. Number three. Sure. 167 C, which would constitute a continuation of a non conforming use and an extension of a non conforming use. 167-8A and 8C. The uh, applicant is on the left side, 30 feet to 10.5 feet. 
and rear setbacks are forty to ten point five feet in accordance with the town of Halifax zoning bylaws section one sixty seven dash eleven. Uh, the area is zoned business. Uh, petition number nine thirty three. Um, Mr. Casagrande, are you with us? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, we did have a, uh, a site inspection uh, on uh, Saturday. That's it. Yes, Saturday morning. Uh, just so the uh, board notes and the public, uh, there was there were no deliberations being done uh, during the site inspection. It was uh, just walking the property. So uh, I'll first open it up to uh, members of the board. Uh, Jerry, you were there on, on Saturday. What, what was your impression? I'll tell you, it, it's, it's, it's nice to do a walkthrough when you look at the drawings, and the drawings really don't give you, uh, when you look at the drawing, you say, oh, why don't you do this, why don't you do that? But when you actually walk the site, you can see that there are a lot of restrictions that you can't do anything. Um, looking at where he's going to put the garage, uh, the back of it is Walmart. He backs up to the section of Walmart that really isn't in use. Uh, by the company. To the left side of it is Stop and Shop. <clears throat> that didn't look very, um, no problem with putting it there. And then further down you have the, where the Lionsville Tavern is located. But the building itself, where it's situated, really doesn't come up anywhere near the building. It's still mainly in their parking lot, as far as location-wise. The front of the uh, section, they show that the water runoff, uh, it, would be impossible to move the building forward. So when you look at the drawings, it looked like there was plenty of room, but in reality, there isn't. And to the right of the building, you have a new septic system and you have additional parking. And if you try to move the building close to where the parking is, then you're gonna come into a problem with uh, uh, cars trying to get by existing parking spaces, or even the fire department bringing in a piece of apparatus in. It just doesn't look like it would uh, move anywhere else. So the building, the way it's situated, looks pretty decent to me. Uh, Bob, how about you? Uh, I agree with Jerry. It's it's always nice to walk the property. You look at the plans, it looks like there's plenty of room to put this building in, in, in other locations, but you walk the property, it's pretty narrow. If you move it over towards one side, so the side setbacks are more in line, you lose your parking for the employees, which that's no good. Um, you really can't move the building forward because the other building, you can see there's water issues, the way that the land ran away. Uh, in that back corner, you're, you're pretty far away from the existing businesses, the Lionville Tavern, the uh, Walmart's a pretty far distance. I think it's a logical location, the best location for this property. Um, I think it fits within the character of the, their in that area. It's, it's not out of, out of sorts. I, I myself uh, ag agree with you when, when I went out Saturday, uh, Walmart, there's actually that gigantic uh, retention pond there at Walmart that separates the property lines uh, to yes. any place near the parking lot of Walmart. And there was a, okay. a, a quite a large uh, grass area before you even came to any type of asphalt on the stop and shop side. Uh, I do know, uh, uh, you know, as far as anything else, the topography also where in front of the building, I agree with, yeah. with uh, uh, Bob and Jerry there, there is a rather large dip down there, uh, a decrease where you really couldn't right. move the, the building forward towards, say, Plymouth Street area. Uh, again, the, with the uh, apparatus, uh, the fire, that was a concern too. I guess the fire department uh, did take a practice run for lack of a better term you know to see if they could get in there if there was a, a problem uh i i do have a couple of things that uh i, I have some concern about that uh the uh, the space and the and the cars that were are going to be placed and parked inside the building are going to be personal use that if uh uh if there was any type of uh, condition or whatever that uh, the space is not be used for rent for uh renting the parking spaces out they say any other cars other than uh that belong to the owner uh no commercial business would be conducted from from that uh site uh i i had a concern you know looking at the property like like you said bob you you, you look at it and it looks uh, like it could, it's going to be really tight 
an awful lot of buildings in a small area. But uh, doing the math and in, in the numbers that was uh, provided by uh, Mr. Casa Grande there too, the, the lot site itself is 38,890 square feet. Uh, the two buildings, existing buildings now, uh, total uh, dimensional wise, 3, 000, combined 3,935 square feet. Uh, the new proposed building would be 4,000. So added together, that's a total of 7,935 square feet on a lot that's 38,890 square feet. It does come under uh, our requirement of uh, uh, no more than 25% of the lot be covered by uh, building. And it actually comes out to 20.4%. Uh, that was that was my concern. Uh, just looking at it first. How about uh, Kasaya or uh, or Pete? Any questions or your opinions? I think I think the building the way they, they have it right now it'll be it'll be uh, just right where you know for the location that it's in. Pete, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I still, I, I, I read the, the letter that um, the applicant put in. Um, it, it, a lot of that makes sense. Um, but I still, the, the, the bottom line is he could, he could meet all the requirements and just have a smaller building. And I think that it, he, the, the thing that, the, the couple things I think that come up in my mind um, and I wasn't able to be at the site visit, but I've, I've driven by it and I looked at it from a couple different angles. Um, the, it's, it's, I, I agree with everybody on the lot and the building and, and moving it and the way the lot is situated. Um, but it's still kind of, and we've had this problem a couple of times in that same area where people want, I mean, this is, we're talking now eight, almost 8,000 square feet of building on a, on a lot that's less than an acre. Um, which I, it, which, you know, I guess is under the 25%. Um, and, and I guess it, it's by right, I guess it, it is under that 20 or it's under the 25%, but it also with all the other stuff, the parking lot and, and the topography, I guess, of the land, but, but it's the water drainage, which is, comes into the, the conversation. We have a lot of, about other lots. Um, he, he could build a building and not ask for anything. It would just have to be a smaller building. We've run into this a couple of times, and and personally, um, I'm not. I, I'm. I guess the the hardship of needing more space for nine cars or eighteen cars isn't necessarily meeting the hardship standard for me personally. And maybe there's something else to that 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 I'm not looking at, or I haven't thought about, or it was part of a different conversation. But um, like, I I guess that's still the sticking point for me. Is is it could be a small, like I, I completely understand there's nowhere else to put that size building on that lot and made it, make it work. And I know it's in a commercial district. I think, I think the concern I have is if every lot in that area that is less than an acre had three buildings worth of 8,000 square foot buildings on it, we would have a very different setup down there that I think is not necessarily the intent of the bylaw. So, um, so I guess it comes down to the, the size of the building and whether or not there is a need there that I'm not seeing. Mr. Grant, would you like to? Uh, uh, sure, sure, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to um, uh, to Pete's point, um, there actually aren't any other commercial uh, properties along the stretch of 106 or going up 58 that are under neighbor. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively close to being an acre. The square footage is, mm -hmm. is darn near an acre, that's for sure. But again, I'm still the only lot at only 100 feet wide, which is it, it, interesting enough. And it was too bad you weren't able to be there for the site visit. Because I think it made a lot of sense to, to those who, who were there. The, the, the narrowness really does just dictate how things get placed a little bit uh, as far as all that goes on the lot. And again, I mean, the town allows for 25% lot coverage. And obviously, if my lot's a little under 40,000 square feet, my 25% is a smaller number than two, obviously, which is, which is fine. It is what it is. Um, but I'm still falling pretty well under that uh, with this building. As far as reshaping the building to you know, meet some of the setbacks, like the rear setback or whatever, uh, it, then at that point, does the building 
because of the nature of what vehicles are, they can't be maneuvered into it. I did look at potentially trying to make this a long, long, long building, <laughs> basically almost attached to the other building and then go all the way back. The topography, the way it raises up, you'd, you'd be stepping up, bay, it would just be a series of bays all along one wall. You know, it, I would argue it would probably be far less attractive than what I'm trying, than what I'm trying to do and be a lot more aggressively seen by the neighbors at that point too. Mr. Costa-Grin, did you, uh, can you address uh, the issue too of uh, drainage? Haven't you uh, in, improved and <laughs> changed the septic system as well as the drainage area because there has been a problem on the, on the lot? Yeah, there's the, the typical of most of Halifax got a pretty high water table. It, 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 would, it would appear when you come to my property that it, it's one of the higher properties in town based on where you're sitting there, but we, we all know there's a lot of clay. Uh, et cetera in there. So we had had uh, past uh, water problems with uh, the runoff coming from, from the back and getting into the, to the back building, which is actually on a slab and the water was getting in there. So we had to do, uh, we dug out that grassy area where, you know, where it was a discussion of pulling the building forward to, uh, and that has all gravel under it. Um, so while it's not the formal 24 inch pervious PVC that we will be doing um, should you guys give me the okay to put the building, this building up, uh, which will do an even better job at the drainage. What we have there now uh, is adequate to deal with the drainage so that it doesn't get into that, that building now. And as well as we um, had to move our septic field a number of years ago from where it was under the parking uh, up into the back where it is now and where, where it is now, I'm just gonna shift it over a little bit into the corner and I have to make it a little bit bigger anyway because if I'm adding another building, I have to make the septic system a little bigger. So, um, so we've kind of had to deal with the, with the water issues. Uh, that was uh, one of the things that was very uh, upfront when I was designing this with the engineers. Uh, we have gone through site plan uh, with, with the planning board and there was a lot of talk. We did do a lot of talk about the drainage and how would we contain the drainage on the site and uh, you know, all this drainage that goes on here now, there's, there's quite a bit of it in place to deal with that sort of thing. But it's pretty typical, I think, what we see in Halifax on most sites. You, you're right, Pete, the and, water's an issue. And, the, <laughs> and uh, Mr. kessler Grani, there, there won't be any other cars being, spaces being rented out, uh, no. cars that don't belong to anybody else. Uh, no. or they, this is strictly for your personal use. It's for my personal use. Um, they're obviously, when you, car collecting world there there's you know friends say hey can i throw a car in there or whatever there's, there's nothing that would be rent um if i had a you know an extra spot and a buddy needs to keep his car over the winter there for a short term i mean it's not rent it's just letting my friend keep his car there would be all it would be so but that's not my intent the intent is that it's all my vehicles um i'm not renting out the space there's no other business going to go on there i mean it, to do the building i have to design it with a bathroom and all these other things. I, I'm not even planning on installing bathrooms, so I'll just walk down to my office. <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't know if we had touched on it before. Is, is the building going to be heated? It will be heated, yes. It'll be, uh, will there be running uh, water and electricity? There'll be electricity and water, yes. Uh, no bathrooms? Well, it's going to be designed to have a bathroom in it. I'm probably not going to build the bathroom because I don't need it. Anybody else have any other questions? Pete, Jerry, we good? No, no, I'm fine. Bob, Messiah? No. Uh, okay, Jeff, how, how this works is that there, there are people in the audience that, that uh, want to ask questions. The, the questions go through the through the chairman, in which case, if you do have a question or a concern, I, I, I will then find a, an answer for you or, or discuss that topic with, with, the, uh, with the applicant. Uh, I don't see anybody else raising their hand. Oh, hi, Dan, you're back. How are you? I didn't break. I, I obeyed all traffic laws getting here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alana, can you make a note that Dan is with us? <laughs> I sure did. 712. Okay. Uh, okay, in which case, uh, seeing no other uh, indication, I'll accept a... Uh, How does, uh, how's Dan feel about it? Dan, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm kind of I, I didn't that. make the uh, on the uh, Saturday site inspection, but I, I did go back there and look previous to that. Um, I'm in agreement with Peter. 
basically I would just be reiterating what Pete said. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, I myself again, I think as, as far as the uh, uh, variance in the special permit, I, I do see the, uh, uh, as mentioned in, in the application, uh, I myself at having walked the property feel that due to the topography of the land, the shape of the land, and again, I believe, I believe this uh, lot itself came into existence, what was it, back in the 60s or early yeah. 70s? 60s. 60s. Yeah. which accounts for the for the shortage of the 100 feet in, in frontage on Plymouth Street. Uh, I myself, I don't see it uh, derogating from the intent of the bylaw where he does meet the other requirements. And uh, I don't feel it would be detrimental to the established character of the neighborhood, just myself. And anybody else want to address any of the other issues? Okay, then how about a um, motion regarding petition number 933? I'll make a motion to accept petition 933 um, with the conditions it's personal use only um, as presented. Second. Okay, uh, I, I do need to check with the applicant. That is a condition. Mr. Casagrande, is that acceptable to you? Yes, because it's uh, understood, obviously, it, it's owned by a business, so it's technically a business use and everything. Uh, but yes, it is my, the, as the owner of the business, it will be my personal cars that are in there. Okay, I have a, um, a motion on the floor and a second regarding petition number 933 as presented with the uh, condition that it uh, uh, not be used for anything, any other commercial businesses. How's that? Yeah. Uh, can I ask a question that, uh, that sure. if he, if he doesn't long down the road, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, if, if he d isn't the owner of that property, that doesn't transfer into a new ownership, correct? Cause it's used by right. Once you know, that restriction, I don't think sticks with the building or does it. Well, I, if, 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 I, may, if I may, I think my, my understanding would be, you know, anybody that wanted to do a different use would be coming back through the boards. Obviously if somebody wanted to do something different with it later. I would agree with that. Yeah, I think I, the change in use would have to go back through the board. All right. And I think any other substantial change would also have to come back to the board. Yeah. But being business owned and being sold, let's say as a business, as a lot with a building that's part of the business, I mean, yeah, that, that doesn't that doesn't work because the, the special it's permit is and then it's business and but it's personal that doesn't work well it's the it's the use it's still the, the building's just owned one way and used another so so that's that's um so this when you read the the public hearing it does say special permit to construct it's not none of none of this stuff so the the variances are all uh structural Structural. The special permit is to to construct the the garage and the business zone, which I think is is part of the the application that you have. That's that's a that's, that's a special a permit class in the business zone. That's why that was chosen. In P two, it's if if it's a if it was changed, there would be even though it's in a business zone, there'd be a change of use. Yeah. And if it was used other than personal business, it would. It's my feeling. I I would think it would have to come back in front of the board if there was a change of use, just like, uh, well, several of our last petitions, you know, where they changed the use from commercial to residential or, or a mixed use commercial residential. But this is, if he changed from, to a, from a personal use, he agreed to the condition that it would only be used for his, uh, for his own personal. Yeah. Right. Commercial use will just be me. It just be owned by, uh, mm -hmm. and in the name of yeah. the commercial. And within the business district, the reason I applied for that special permit is that the parking garage use is a special permit use in the business district. Sorry to blow oh, that up. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to ask. I was, I was just curious, to be honest. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so we do have a, a motion on the floor in a second. Uh, I'm gonna call for a uh, voice vote. I'll start with Kasaya. Yes. Pete? Uh, no. Uh, where am I? Bob Durgan. Yes. 
Jerry? Yes. Myself, yes. And Dan, how do you feel? I, I would say no. Okay, the, uh, the vote passes uh, four to one. One, two, three, four to yeah. one. Passes. All right, uh, Mr. Casagrande, you can give uh, Alana a call and, uh, you know, she'll talk you through the uh, process of uh, the appeals period and all that sure. fun thing. Thank you very much. Thank you for your consideration. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Have a good, have a good night. Bye-bye now. Okay, I got a, just a couple more minutes here before our 7.30 uh, hearing. So we gotta, we gotta wait a couple minutes for uh, petition number 936. Be right there. How was the detail, Dan? It was a nice, easy one, finally. I've had some tough ones lately. It's good. <laughs> Pete, you open full and Good to go. Fully back. Everybody, everybody's back in. I was in classrooms today, like it was a normal, like it was a normal school year. I saw learning happening. Like it was. Everybody's got yeah. a mask on. A little weird, but. We're, when we're, did they? Uh, when did they fully open? We were back the twelfth. The twelfth. Yep. So. Everybody all, adjusting. Yep. Yep. Every everybody, it's fine. Like we have. There's more food in the building for these kids. There's free breakfast and lunch all day. Like it's, it's all good stuff. It's you know, obviously it's we have all sorts of weird rules and stuff we still have to do and all that stuff. We got all the graduation rules and all that, but it's oh really? Oh, it's as great. opposed to lack thereof graduation like last year. Right? Correct. Yeah. Now at least we're having one and it's like relatively normal. The problem's just going to be we got to have limits and all sorts of stuff. So. Whatever. whatever it's com compared to the alternative it's not bad i'll take it yeah <laughs> i hear you okay seeing that it's uh uh 7 30 we'll move on to we'll open the hearing for petition number uh nine which one did i just do this is uh 9 36 here we go The Halifax uh, Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Monday, uh, April 12th, 2021 at 8.05 p.m. Uh, via Zoom on the application by Jose and Anna Paula Philo for a special permit and variance to build a roof overhang and a deck located at 12 White Island Road, Halifax, Mass, 02338. Said property is owned by Jose and Anna Paula of Philo of 12... White Island Road, Halifax, Mass 02338, as shown on Assessor's Map 42, Lot 45. Title reference book, uh, 51451, page 213. Uh, the applicants are seeking a special permit to build a 10.8 foot by 16 foot roof overhang and a 10 foot by 20 foot deck on the property, which would constitute a continuation of a non-conforming use and an extension of a non-conforming use in accordance with the Town of Halifax zoning bylaws Section 167.8a and 8c. The project also requires a variance of front setback from Montponset Street from uh, 50 feet to 40 feet in accordance with the Town of Halifax Zoning Bylaw, Section 167.11, area zone residential, petition number 936. Uh, 
Philo, did I pronounce it correctly, Jose? Say again? Uh, how, did I pronounce your last name correctly? Yes, yes, Philo. Philo, okay, I was close. Uh, Jose, uh, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about your petition and, and what you're looking to do on the property there? Yeah, the thing is, I think... <laughs> The thing is, I'm not speaking English very good, you know, I don't know if I can explain to you, but so I try, I try make a roof to cover my, my grill in the, in the try make a deck, you know, but I don't, I don't know, I don't know if I can explain this to you. Okay. So look at, looking at the picture here, it's a, uh, it's a uh, overhang. And is that the only thing that's, uh, Jose, it's a 10 foot by 16 foot roof overhang. Looking on the picture there on page one, two, three, four, on the back of it. Is that all it's gonna be used for, just for the, for the outside grill? Yes. Okay, and uh, the deck. The deck is going to be right beside it. And yes. 10 feet by 20 feet. Yes. Jose, is there anything there now? Or is there... Yes, the thing, I, I started making the, the, the roofing, but not the deck. The deck not started yet, but the, I, I started making the, 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 the roof. So I have a little deck that they, they, they exist with that. When I buy the house, the little one, and uh, but I want to just to get this one bigger, you know. But I only started making that the the, the whole thing. Oh, I see. So uh, the reason you need a variance, you're moving ten feet closer to Mont Ponson Street. So Mont Ponson Street is actually off your backyard. Yes. All right, gentlemen. Any questions of uh, of Jose? How big is the lot? Thirteen thousand. It's thirteen thousand. Okay, a little bit. It's cut off. Thirteen thousand square feet. Thirteen thousand one hundred and seventy something. I think it says. Yeah. Oh. Alana, I thought that was you sending me a text. Sorry. Gentlemen, anybody else have any other questions of uh, Mr. Fila? Looks like it's not that much further toward, like the, the house is almost at a different angle than the road. So it almost looks like they're not really... Like the one corner, are you looking at the same thing I have? The one corner of the house is kind of real close to the road. It looks like it's almost, they're probably adding just a little bit, it looks like. Maybe. What, what's that, the 17 and a half feet, Pete? Yeah, I'm looking at the, because it's on the back side towards Mont Ponce, right, right, correct. Get it this, right. This would be the first entrance way into White Island Road. If you're yeah. if you're going northbound on 58, if I get this correctly, uh, the first street on the right would be White Island Road, and, and then yeah. it goes out further. So, yes, they're, they're not encroaching on the on the on the front setback at all. It's the uh, mm -hmm. the rear setback that you know because of the deck. It looks like one side of the deck is 40 feet from Mont and the other side is 42.9. Mm -hmm. It looks like that shed's even closer. All right. Right. Yes, it does. <clears throat> oh, I see that that dotted line there. Pete, that's what's messing me up there. That dotted line there is the uh, right? <laughs> hundred feet off the top of the inland bank. Off the top of the inland bank. A lot of lines going on there. Yeah. I can honestly say I've been on the board for a good many years. I have never seen the top of an inland bank. Inland bank. Before. You learn something new every day, don't you? 
Somebody must know what that means somewhere. But <laughs> We could refer to our real estate guy, Mr. Bosari, if you want to fill us in there. True. <laughs> I could Google celebrity. it. <laughs> Local celebrity. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm assuming that there's... Um, Ms. Chimmick, if you ask the applicant, is there... Um, is that higher or lower? Is that is that a boundary of a higher or lower grade? No, it Only sounds like there's a banking there. 100 foot off the top of Inland Bank. It's going to do something with the, uh, the pond, I would assume. Yes, yeah, I think you're right, Bob, because if you look even further north on that, actually where it says Mon Ponce at Pond, there's another dotted yeah. line there. Yeah. top of the inland bank so i don't think it has anything to do with the uh, property lines per se it's probably just a measurement of uh so is that a no yeah. build is that a no build zone um like a conservation 100 foot off the pond because the foot if the road's 50 feet you look scaling it it looks like that's probably nothing can be done within 100 feet of the pond well you're you know what, that does make sense, Dan, because if you look at the plot plan too, it, even if the house was, at the lot was 13,000 square feet, why wouldn't they have pushed the house back further off of water, right. you know, into right. the center of the, if they could have way back when when it was uh, it was built, if it wasn't, like you were saying, referring to a, like a no build zone. But again, it's proposed. Yeah. I think there's, a, there's another notation there, just uh, just above the shed. 100 feet off the top of the inland bank. There's another daughter line. Right. It looks like his uh, the deck and the overhang would still be beyond that. Would, yeah, be, be well in front of the, it, if it was a, a no build zone per se. Yeah. But actually I think in the uh, building inspector's denial letter, he didn't, uh, Make mention that any type of uh, interference with the with such a restriction would would have to either be varied or or whatever. So, Mr. Chairman, what's there right now? That looks like where it says proposed deck. There's a little box, hashed box. Is that a smaller deck that's existing? I think that's what he said. Yes, he did say there was a smaller one there. Where is Jose? <clears throat> say again. Yes, Jose, what's out there now? It's still a, a small deck, like a three, three, by, three by four feet, something like that. Yeah, and, and that's coming out? You're taking, get, taking that out, removing that? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. Is, does that answer your question there, Dan? Yes. So it's, just, it's a 10-foot difference is what he – right now that existing deck is 50 feet off the road. Oh, I see what you mean, right. So they're only, uh, I see exactly what you mean, yeah. But the petition is asking from 50 to 40. Right, because the deck itself would be uh, measured from the end of the deck to the uh, property line for the for the rear setback. But it looks like, I, I, I don't even think this is right. I think the 50 is the corner of the house, because look at the dimension of the deck is 10 by 20. So I think he's closer than, my point I'm getting at is I think he's closer than 50 feet to the, road already if you if you understand what i'm saying he's putting on a 10 by 20 deck so he's from the house to the proposed deck is 10 feet he's got a deck that's probably four or five feet already i think he's closer than 50 feet right now i don't think he's actually oh, moving. oh, oh i see what you mean see what yeah. i'm saying yeah i don't even think he's at he's asking for 10 feet because he's actually, asking think, for less than 10 feet. Right, because uh, actually on a corner lot like this too, you have uh, two frontages, correct? Yes, I believe so, yeah. All right, well, okay, it's normally the uh, uh, practice of the board to, to do a uh, site inspection. Is uh, anybody uh, feel uh, the uh, familiar with the property or familiar with the area that, that would like to make a motion to waive the on-site or would you gentlemen like to go out and take a look? What is the pleasure of the board? Love that kind of talk. 
I'll make a motion to waive the uh, site inspection. I'll so, I second. so I have a motion and a second on the floor to waive the uh, the on-site inspection. I'm going to call for a voice vote. Saya? Yes. Pete? Yes. Uh, Bob? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Myself, yes. Uh, Dan, how about you? Yes. Okay, to uh, waive the on-site uh, passes uh, five zero to zero. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Field, that basically bottom line that just saved you thirty days. Is basically <laughs> that's the bottom line. <laughs> uh, we didn't have to do a site inspection on it. Okay, uh, how about <clears throat> yes. Uh, Joe Webby has <clears throat> his hand raised. Yeah, Mr. Webby, your uh, your mic is muted. Sorry, I just wanted to let you know I was here if Jose needed me. Oh, okay. Uh, well, Mr. Webby, anything you'd like to add? Uh, you know, granted, if there's a three, four foot deck out there now, he's uh, he's just expanding it by about another six feet. That, that's exactly what's happening in the. Uh, the 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 bank issues uh, the, those are for conservation. Uh, the the conservation currently has a no structure within 50 feet of uh, a resource area, which in this case would be an inland bank. So that's why we have the 50 and the 100 foot on there. So oh, this is I, not familiar, I wasn't familiar with the term in inner the uh, inland bank. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never seen this before. Mm -hmm. So it's just a measurement as far as. Uh, uh, encroaching the the water line, water. That's exactly right. Yes. Okay. Dan, does that satisfy you? Are you good with that? I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions of Mr. Webby or anything, gentlemen? I would like to just note that Alan Diaz has commented in the chat, saying inland banks is a wetlands line. Halifax has a 50 foot no build zone. I don't know. Uh, I'm just reading the comments. And then uh, Elena had responded to that saying, what about the 25% coverage? Well, it is a, uh, a grandfathered lot. The lot itself is 13,176 feet. So uh, I think as far as a variance of a special permit goes, the uh, hardship itself is uh, is the, uh, the the size of the property, uh, the topography, the restrictions on it. Is other houses in the uh, residential area that I, I only think it, my personal feeling would only benefit from it. So I don't see it being a detriment to the established character of the neighborhood. And uh, because of the size and shape and the two frontages, I, I do see uh, I do not feel it would be. Uh, uh, detrimental to the intent of the uh, of the bylaw. Unless anybody else feels different or would like to comment on that? His, his application actually asks for a continuation of the non-conforming use and extension of a non-conforming use. So I think that falls. falls okay. Out. And as far as uh, Mr. Picciarelli's letter, did we cover everything in there? I believe so. Okay, well then, uh, Seeing uh, no other indication, uh, I would uh, I'll accept the motion by any of the members of the board voting on this, you know, with the regular five members, uh, Jerry, Joy, uh, Bob, Kasaya, Pete, and myself, and uh, certainly ask for the input from uh, the alternate, uh, Dan Bosari. But uh, I'll accept a motion regarding petition number 936. I'll make a motion to accept petition number 936 as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to accept uh, petition number 936 as presented. Uh, all those in favor say aye. I'll call for a voice vote. Kasaya? Yes. Pete? Yes. Uh, Bob? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Myself? Yes. Dan? Yes. Okay, the... Uh, Motion passes five zero to zero. Uh, Mr. Webby, if you want to, uh, ex you know, tell Jose or explain to him the, the process, I have him just give uh, Alana a call in the uh, morning, and he can uh, 
go through the process uh, with her. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Already. Okay. Our uh, next hearing is at uh, 755, petition number 938. So we have about uh, eight or nine minutes to uh, kill before we, uh, we can open up that meeting. Have I got that right? Alana, have I got that right? Yes, that's correct. 755. Unfortunately, with the, some of the meetings drag on beyond the, the allotted time, I'll just finish up real quick, but if the, the meeting is scheduled for a time certain, we can't we can't open up a hearing un, until that uh, until we approach that time. Oops. All right, yeah, you guys want to take a break? I'll see you back here in about five minutes. Don't fall asleep, Kasaya. I will. <laughs> Long day. I know. <laughs> I'm going to try to make that thing tomorrow morning at 11. I'll see you over there. I will. Did you work today? Uh, no, I did not. But I'm tired just looking at you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that chair looks too comfortable because I, you're, you're going to go out. <laughs> I'll probably end up here. <laughs> I 
Jerry couldn't fall asleep because he's got all his secretaries in his office over there taking all the notes. <laughs> <laughs> you still hold the award, Jerry, for the best office at home. Well, I think if you saw it, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a screen that you pulled out. <laughs> uh. Alana, are we missing anything? Am I missing any uh, chats or questions or anything from people in the audience that just, I hope you're going to like raise a flag at me or something if I do miss it. Oh, she felt she's gone. She left us. Where's Charlie tonight? He's been doing it. Oh, so, oh. He's the host. He's been telling you. Uh, I think uh, Charlie's doing another meeting and Caesar's running this one or hosting this one. Bob, you're muted and so aren't you, Pete. I don't know what happened. You're showing, you're showing muted on my screen. I don't even see Alana. Oh, there you are. Oh, she's muted. That's why. You're muted, Alana. That's why. Yep. to answer your questions there are no more no other comments okay thanks Caesar. you're welcome bert did you call me sorry all righty i can do that no i said did you call me <laughs> oh no oh, oh okay <laughs> no i just I thought uh, i heard my name i uh I saw you were muted. I didn't know if you did it on purpose or by accident. Oh, no. I just do it so it's not. Because you're, you're tired of listening to me. I understand. You know, it's, it's crazy over here at my house. There's <laughs> a party going on, you know. Yeah, I hear you. I got, I got one more minute we can kick off here. Okay, seeing that it's uh, seeing that it's uh, six fifty five, I'm gonna uh, open the um, hearing up for petition number nine three eight. Nine three eight. Okay, here we go. The Halifax Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Monday, May third, two thousand twenty one, at seven fifty five p.m. via Zoom on the application by Anthony Curtin for a special permit for the installation of an above ground fuel storage tank to be located at 640 Plymouth Street, Halifax, Mass 02338. Said property is owned by Anthony Curtin as shown on Assessor's Map 60, Lot 14, title reference, book 29293, page 0158. The applicant is seeking a special permit for the installation of an above ground fuel storage tank in accordance with the Town of Halifax Zoning Bylaws, Section 167-7C, uh, Table of Use Regulations, uh, Industrial Uses, Light Industrial Uses, including Manufacturing, Storage, Processing, Fabrication, Packing, and Assembly. Area Zone Business, Petition Number 938. Alana, we uh, confirm... Uh, is this in a business zone or is this in the industrial zone, light industrial zone? Um, 
I, it should say in the um, in that notice. It says business. Oh, okay. Is that is that? Incorrect? I thought it was. I thought it was industrial. Where did I read that? Bert, I have the uh, zoning map up. It is business. It is business. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Okay, um, Mr. Curtin, how yes, are you? Sir. Good, thank you. Uh, why don't you uh, explain to the board uh, what you want to do here, please? I'm sorry? If I'm... you could just explain uh, what your petition is for, what, you, what you, you, you'd you like to do. Just as you described, I'm looking to seek a special permit to put up a fuel a bulk plant for fuel storage. Um, I presently have a license for underground storage for 50,000 gallons, and I need to amend that to above ground. Um, How big is the tank? Are you going from 50,000 gallons to what, Mr. Curtin? I want to keep everything the same on the license that I have, other than the fact that I want it to say above ground. It is 50,000 gallons of motor fuel, 500 gallons of lube oil, 300 gallons of heating oil for the garage and 150 gallons of antifreeze. And that's on a license issued by the state in 1979. Okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, open it up to questions from members of the board. Uh, my first question is, Mr. Curtin, uh, has there, have you had a site plan review? Uh, by the uh, planning board for for what you intend to do here? I am having a meeting on Thursday. Okay, well, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, the other members of the board, but as, it is my understanding in a discussion with uh, the town council, uh, uh, Amy Quessel, that uh, is the, our, our, according to our bylaws, the site plan review has to be held prior to uh, any type of uh, issuing of a special permit for uh, for uh, overground sto uh, storage. So without uh, the site plan review, uh, we can. Uh, well, Mr. Curtin, you have a you have a choice. I guess you can either uh, withdraw your application without prejudice, or we can. Uh, postpone it until uh, after your site plan review has been completed. I guess I'll have to reschedule till that's been done. Okay. It has been, uh, just for the other members of my discussion with uh, uh, Amy Quessel, uh, town council, that uh, through the process of, of doing the site plan review, uh, that we should uh, uh, give the applicant uh, at least 60 days to uh, to, to go through the process of the site plan review for the uh, approval process. So uh, I'll ask for a, um, a motion from uh, one of the members to uh, postpone petition number 938 uh, after giving them the 60 days uh, to uh, complete, the, uh, complete the application, complete the uh, special permit process, in which case then the, uh, the board would be able to, to uh, vote on that. So uh, I'll accept a motion from one of the members. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes. That would be a motion to continue to um, a date certain. Uh, did I say postpone? I meant that's better. Uh, to continue the hearing until, uh, what's our uh, June date, uh, Alana, June? Um, it would be July. Um, to 60 days would be two months. Um, and that would be July 12th. Let me just confirm. Yeah, that's my calendar is July 12th. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So thanks, Alana. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, then I need a motion uh, from one of the members to continue the hearing for uh, petition number 938 until our July 12th uh, meeting. Make a motion to uh, continue 938 to July 12th. And do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the floor to continue the hearing for petition number 938 until a July 12th uh, meeting date of the Zoning Board of Appeals. All those in favor say aye, and I'll ask for a voice vote. Isaiah? Yes. 
Uh, Peter? Yes. Bob? Yes. Uh, Jerry? Yes. Myself, yes. And Dan? Yes. Okay, uh, the motion passes to uh, continue the hearing until uh, July 12th uh, meeting day, in which case, uh, Mr. Curtin, uh, you can contact uh, Alana at the uh, zoning office and she'll set you up with a time. Okay, thank you. I okay. can put you on for, for 7.05 if that works. That works fine. Okay. 7.05 it is. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, moving on. Oh, we have to, sorry, our next hearing isn't until 8.20. Is that right, Alana? Have I got that right, 8.20? That's it, unfortunately. Um, 9.39. All right, we'll uh, have to wait. Hey, man, do we have any? I came in late. Are there any bills or anything we could do and get stuff out of the way, or can we do uh, that we out of order? We did that already. Oh, okay. Had some time to kill. Uh, what do we have on our other business? We did the uh, sexual harassment policy. I don't, uh, Dan, you'll have to maybe you weren't here for that one. You have to go up to uh, sign off. Uh, with Alana for your copy of the uh, the town sexual harassment policy. And there's also a notation here that uh, uh, we do have uh, a hearing on petition number 920 for the uh, 40B comprehensive permit for the Country Club Estates at 7 p.m. on May 19th, uh, 2021 via Zoom. That's all I have. Okay. Oh yeah, Dan, too, I think uh, we talked about before, I, I was told by the director of maintenance that there were new key fobs for the, uh, for the building, that each one of the members just has to go up there and sign up for it. He said he was going to drop it off at uh, uh, Alana's office, but he, he hasn't gone by there yet, so uh, I'm sure that'll be at some point in the near future, he'll be dropping them off and, you know, you can okay. buy yours off of Alana. She's selling them, she won't give them away. <laughs> All right, break time. What can I tell you? See you at 
No sé.
Okay, I got 20 after. We good to go? Let's uh, see, it's 820. Let's uh, reopen the meeting. Let's see, we we're on petition number 939. The Halifax Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 3rd, 2021 at 820 p.m. via Zoom on the application by St. Peter Automotive Group slash Allen and Derek St. Peter for a special permit for change of use to an auto repair mechanical business in the rear building located at 416 Rear Plymouth Street, Halifax, Mass 02338. Said property is owned by Halifax Park Plaza slash Patrick Maloney as shown on the Cessus Map 72, Lot 10, uh, Book 52462, Page 7. The applicant is seeking a special permit for a change of use from a vacant structure formerly used as a laundromat, a uh, filter building, to an auto repair mechanical business in the rear building in accordance with the Town of Halifax Zoning Bylaws, Section 167.7c, Table of Use Regulations, uh, quote, repair garages for motor vehicles in, quote, auto body soldering or welding shops. Area of Zone Business, Petition Number 939. Uh, okay, who do we have here speaking on this petition? Yes, my name is Alan St. Peter. All right. Uh, Hello? Uh, yes, hi. How are you doing? I, Hello? I, I, can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Can yes. You hear <laughs> All right, there you are. Yes, affirmative. Okay. Uh, Mr. St. Peter, uh, I had a... Uh, uh, couple concerns with the building uh what's the deal with the uh with the septic system have you spoke with the owner of the property or what are you tying into for a septic system uh, my understanding is he's upgrading the septic uh, my understanding is he okay. has not done that yet i believe he's on uh the land hold on i'm gonna um, I believe uh, the landlord Patrick Maloney is on, and he okay. did tell me you uh, got you on. It's yes. Halifax Park Plaza. Right <laughs> there, he is. No, that's Stephen Gillis. Patrick, uh, iPhone 828 is connecting to audio. Mr. Maloney, are you with us? Well, whatever the case may be, let's get back to you. Uh, yeah, I understand uh, the currently, as we speak, uh, the septic system uh, is the current one is, is on an easement uh, over there on uh, connecting to property on is that Putters Way or uh, the Halifax Country uh, Country Club Drive, whatever it happens to be, and that uh, Mr. Maloney was in the process of completing uh, completing different uh, projects and in estimates for putting in his own system on his own property, but understanding right now. I don't know where that is. That's why I was hoping you might have some answers for us. Uh, other than he, he told me he's doing significant improvements of the uh, the main building, and this is a 2,400 square foot metal building uh, in the rear, and he, he told me that that the existing septic system goes way out into the woods. Oh, so this building is not attached. It's it's not on the back of uh, Rodney's. No, it, it, it's, it's, de it. it's detached. Oh, okay. It's detached, and there is currently no bathroom. Yeah, but it has to have a septic system. Let me ask you another question. Uh, yes. You no, know, uh, this project also requires, according to the uh, the Halifax bylaws, that a uh, uh, 
a site plan review has been conducted by the planning board. Have you got that all done? Or has that been accomplished yet, Mr. St. Peter? Yes, the landlord is tackling that. So the answer just, is no. I, I don't own the property. I, I, I'm just leasing the metal building. Well, it's a, it's a matter of our bylaw that we cannot issue a special. Just like that last case, I know you were on, you were listening to it. Uh, just like that last case, uh, it requires that a site plan review is conducted prior to the issuance of a, of a special permit. And until that site plan review is done, completed, and approved, according to our Halifax bylaw, uh, we can't even hear, hear the petition at this point. Because you have to go through a certain. I submitted a site plan. I, I it, the landlord Patrick Maloney gave me a site plan. And I submitted it and I highlighted uh, my little metal building in the back. My understanding yeah. it was a former uh, filter for a laundry laundromat, right. and my my son and I, Derek, uh, are just going to start a. Oh, I lost All right, you. so so let me under, understand this correctly. Then you you had a site plan all made up. You had given it to Mr. Maloney. Mr. Maloney has or has not presented it for a site plan review to the planning board in Halifax. No, he he gave me a site plan that I made uh, multiple copies. Right, but has it been reviewed by the planning board? prior to coming for your special permit here with the Zoning Board of Appeals? Uh, I know he's doing other work uh, in the main uh, building and has other permits. But my son and I uh, leased in the middle of March, we leased the metal building and I went and saw the uh, building commissioner um, Rob, and he said I had to go through this special permit process. So I right. filled out my application on March 29th, and then on April 5th, um, it was assigned to today, May 3rd. Right. But that is on the basis of that you have your site plan reviewed by the planning board prior to coming to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And as of this afternoon, it had not been submitted to the best of my knowledge in spoken and spoken. And speaking with the, uh, with the chairman of, of the planning board, that that process has not been reviewed by the planning board as such. And again, the septic system itself has not been approved by the Board of Health. So we're kind of in limbo here. We're in a, basically, Mr. St. Peter, and I don't believe it's through any fault of your own, uh, we can't hear the petition until that process is completed. So uh, same thing as I mentioned to you the, on the case before, that uh, I would suggest that you uh, ask for the uh, hearing to be continued until uh, both the septic system has been approved and the site plan has been, review, been reviewed for site plan approval from the, uh, plan, from the planning board, uh, in which case, again, I suggest that we, we'll, uh, according to our town attorney, that we allow you uh, to continue the hearing uh, until uh, for 60 days, and then we'll hear your uh, petition uh, come July. So, uh, just, to, just to clarify, I'm responsible for the site plan or the landlord is? Well, uh, that's a good question. I would, I would probably say that uh, the landlord is. However, uh, because those two things are, are not, haven't been dealt with as of this date, it's holding up your special permit process because you cannot uh, receive or be issued a special permit uh, without having site plan approval and board of health approval uh, regarding uh, the septic system. So I don't believe it's through any fault of your own. You'll have to get a hold of Mr. Maloney, find out where that process is. And, and to start and to do that, you're going to need at least 60 days to go through uh, the board to get the approval. 
make an appointment, have it reviewed, have it voted on before you can come back to our board with your site plan approval in hand. And then we'll, we, we review the uh, application for your special permit. That's so a when I, when I, that's when a I applied on, okay, uh, when I applied on March 29th, how did I get on the May 3rd meeting then? Because if I was you, you oblivious to this. Because you submitted an application. Uh, according to the bylaws, you have to have all the preliminary information in hand, you know, before we can issue the special permit. If uh, we have an incomplete application or an incomplete process to review, there's no way we can vote on that. So I would recommend that you uh, speak could you to give, Mr. Maloney. Could you, could you give me one 30 seconds to get Mr. Maloney on the phone? Sure, uh, go ahead. Bert, um, <clears throat> a phone number did join. I accepted it, I don't know, maybe five minutes ago. Um, I can ask on you. I don't know if that's him or not, because I know he was having trouble getting in the first time. So he might have called from his cell phone. What's up, Pat? Are you on? Um, okay, can you can you uh, speak to the uh, chairman and tell him about the uh, septic system plans? Thank you. Hello? How am I going to speak to him? I've just asked him to unmute himself. Oh, he, I just talked to Pat. He's on. Pat, are you there? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah I think he's a 617 there number. Go. There you go. There he goes. Hey, good evening, everybody. Hi, Mr. Maloney. Hi, how are you? Good. All right. Uh, in order, according to the uh, Halifax bylaws, <laughs> Uh, you have to have a uh, site plan approval from the uh, planning board prior to coming uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, to review the application on a special permit. I also spoke with the, uh, the chairman of the, uh, the Board of Health, and uh, from what I understand, the septic system for the, for the back building there, which, which this ties into, uh, is non-existent. Uh, there's nothing in front of them. There's nothing in front of their board. There's... There's nothing that's been approved of or actually been submitted, per se. Yeah, so, the the uh, the the, uh, pl the site plan I wasn't aware of. I, I did forward one to Al, um, but I wasn't aware that had to be provided in advance or anything else like that. And I was aware it was, it was by special permit; uh, it would be allowed in the rear. But I wasn't I wasn't aware of anything else that I had to do on my end. As far as the septic, I I. Uh, we did have a plan approved, and then we ran into a few other uh, complications. And I believe that uh, Webby Engineering had submitted a new plan, and I'm in front of the board soon, hopefully. Okay. Hi, Mr. Webby. How are you? Oh, Joe here? Yes, yes. I'm here. Hi, Joe. Oh, how are Joe, you? how are you? Good, thanks. How are you doing? doing? Yes, we did... Uh, um, we, we did get a plan approved, but it was up on 10 Putters Way. Um, after that got approved, then uh, Patrick had asked me to explore some more area behind the building, but a little closer to the building to get it off of uh, the Paul Reed property. We did get adequate soil testing, and we do have a septic system plan done, and it, it's almost ready to be, to uh, submit to the town. Okay, so then right now as it exists, there is no septic system for, for the this, build, for this building. Yes. And uh, Mr. Webby, what about the site plan review? Has, has that been done? Um, uh, this is the first I'm hearing about that you, there's a need for the site plan review for this. Yes, according to our bylaws, that has to be done prior to the issuance of a special permit for the Halifax uh, bylaws. So, uh, Mr. Webby, uh, I don't know if Mr. Maloney's still there or not. You, you, yeah. I'm Mr. Here. Webby, you know, you know the process. This isn't going to get done in 30 days between both of them. So no. it's, it's the same as, as the previous petition. I would recommend then that we continue the hearing uh, for 60 days. Even, even 60 days, Mr. Webby, is going to be tight unless everything falls, falls right into place. But... Uh, why don't uh, you uh, continue with uh, continue the uh, hearing until for 60 days? We'll meet again. What was the date, Alana? July 12th. Yes, July 12th. 
and we okay, can do we'll, uh, seven. Okay, and we'll uh, to uh, continue the hearing until uh, July 12th. Why don't we make it at uh, 7.20 p.m.? Sure. How's that, Alana? Good with you? Sounds good. Okay, so uh, oh, no. uh, seeing that there really isn't anything else, Mr. Webb, Joe, there's nothing else we can do about it, not, not without those plans and approvals in front of us. So uh, I'll ask for a, um, a motion from uh, one of the board members to uh, continue uh, petition number 939 uh, to the 60-day meeting. Of our next hearing date would be at uh, July 12th at uh, 7.20 p.m. If uh, one of the members to, oh, I think we need to vote on uh, whether we continue it or not and then, and then go for the date and time. Well, I'll accept a motion to uh, continue the hearing for 60 days. If uh, one of the members could make a, a motion, please. I'll make a motion to continue petition 939 to July 12th meeting. 7.20 p.m. 7.20 p.m., yep. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, uh, there's a motion on the floor and a second to continue the hearing for petition number 939 till uh, July 12th at uh, 7.20 p.m. All those in favor say aye. I'll take a voice vote, Kasaya. Yes. Uh, Pete? Yes. Bob? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Myself? Yes. And Dan? Yes. <laughs> okay. Motion passes to continue the hearing till 7.20 p.m. on July 12th. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you thank all you. for your time. Thank you. Okay, what do we have? Uh, we have seven minutes. I'm here, though. Uh, Mr. Gillis? Yep. Yeah, we can't uh, open the hearing until 8.45. That's your scheduled oh. time. We... Well, I figured if I was here, it wouldn't be a problem. Well, see if there are other people that want to give their opinion, say a Butters or, or other oh, people. Okay. But, and then... Okay. And then we have the hearing and it's all over and done with and they come on. That's and, it, that's it, tough luck. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> all right. I got seven minutes. That's why I think, you know, as long as the other board members, I, I think like from here on out, even uh, Amy Quessel suggested that we, we time them much closer together, the appointments and then, uh, you know, if we run over and we run into a long one, then we'd run into a long one. But uh, other than that, uh, we won't end up. Well, hopefully you won't have to do this too much longer. Yeah, I hear you. It's unusual. You Usually we're not this fast. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> exactly. Very really efficient fast. today. <laughs> so what are you saying? You want things a little more complicated, Jerry? Is that <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we've got enough of that. <laughs> no, no, no. That's for sure.
Okay, seeing that it's 845, close enough. <coughs> Mr. Gill is still with us. He was. Excuse me. I lost Mr. Gills. He was with us. Anybody see him on the board? Nope. Oh. He was with us. How did we lose him? Caesar, do you have him on your board? Who are we looking for? Uh, Stephen Gillis. He was with us before the break. And now I lost him. I don't see him on. Oh, yeah, I don't see him as a participant. It's possible that uh, he stepped away. As, yeah, he's, no one's tried joining in. So the minute I see someone coming in with that name, I'll let you know. Thanks, Caesar. You're welcome. I just sent him an email too. <clears throat> All right, well, let's open the hearing anyway, seeing that it's uh, uh, 8 he just, he, I just, I'm about to admit him. Okay, Coming thanks. in right now. You're welcome. Uh, the Halifax Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 3rd, 2021 at 8.45 p.m. via Zoom on the application by Stephen Gillis for a special permit and or variance to continue the non-conforming use of a pre-existing in-law apartment located at 22 Colby Drive, Halifax, Mass, 02338. Yep. Uh, said property is owned by Stephen and Diane Gillis, as shown on Assessor's Map 34, Lot 77, Book 14680, page 130. The applicant is seeking a special permit for and or any variance required to continue the non-conforming use of a pre-existing in-law apartment in accordance with the with the Town of Halifax Zoning Bylaws, Section 167.7, Schedule of Use Regulations in 167.7 D12, uh, Area is Zoned Residential Petition Number 940. Hi, Mr. Gillis, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, I'm looking for the Buildings Inspector's Denial Letter, because, uh, what has me kind of stymied is the and or variance. Well, <laughs> Tom, the person that at the at the um, building, um, he told me to just put anything in to cover cover whatever I needed. So, okay. And, All right, Mr. Gills, why don't you explain to the board, please, uh, what you want to do here? All right, we're selling the house, and what is happening when we sold it? When we well, actually, I'll, I'll go further back. When we bought it, it was it was bought as an in-law, and uh, the in-law was put on in 1984, 1985. Uh, went through the town and everything, even though the town can't seem to find the plans or anything because of uh, everything switching over to computer. So um, septic system is it was put in with the town because when we had our septic system put in, the uh, the engineering company came here. And they found the plans back in 2007 for the existing septic system for the in-law because we have two different septic systems. So when we bought the house in 1990, we bought it as an in-law. Um, so basically, we were grandfathered in. So when the variance, when the zoning uh, board did a, uh, you did a variance in 2000. That when the rules changed. Uh, uh, in 2000? It, That's what I was 2001. 2001? There was, there was a change at some point in there, right? Yeah, because you're required to have an entrance from uh, the in-law to the main house. We don't have that. That that was before. So we were told we were grandfathered in. Because this has oh. been brought up numerous times because we find every time we refinance that was brought up about the in-law. Right, so now if I understand correctly, you're selling the house and yep. you need to you need to 
have the special permit in order for the buyers buyer. to buy it. The buyer needs it. Yeah. Because the buyers plan on using it for their daughter to live in there. Okay. I'll open it up to uh, questions to Mr. Gillis from members of the board. How big a lot are we on, Mr. Gillis? Pardon me? How big is the lot that uh, your house is on? Uh, 60,000 square feet, roughly. Acre, acre and a half. Has anyone been living in the, the apartment? I mean, the uh, in law? It's where I am right now. now. It's where I am right now. Somebody's always been living in the in law. My daughter, my, my, my sister in law lived in here the first. She died four years late, uh, seven years later from a heart attack right inside the in law. Um, I was one of the ones that tried to push for the 24 hour fire service. So, because she, she died because there was uh, the lack of response, sole response to her. Uh, she did not die from the heart attack. She died from uh, lack of oxygen to the brain. Uh, she survived for another three months after that. Um, so we fought for that. After she passed away, our mother, uh, my mother-in-law moved in here until she passed away. Then my son and his wife moved in here. And, um, and then we switched sides after they started a family and they were living in the main house and we were living in the in-law. Now they are getting divorced. We have no recourse but to sell the house. So, and we were not aware of, we always were told that we were grandfathered in, that we didn't really have to in, hear, uh, worry about anything. Well, when the buyer's lenders checked into it, when they went to the town to see, uh, check with the zoning board or whoever, the building uh, partner, they said that uh, this was not, this was only considered a one family. Even though for the past 10 years plus, we're being, being charged twice by the, by the town for the recycling. We paid double the price for recycling because we have two, we have two um, supposedly two addresses, 21A and 21, 22A and 22B. What's it assessed for Mr. G Mr. Gillis, a one family or a two family? Well, we were always we were always uh, told that it was a two-family. We were taxed as we were um, we were charged by the town for anything as a two-family. Like I said, we were paying a hundred dollars a year for recycling and anything else. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, as far as it is, it's assessed. Is it assessed for as a single-family home with an in-law uh, apartment, or is it assessed for a two? As a back, two back in 1990, when we bought it. It, it, from what I've been told, I was not, my sister, my sister-in-law handled that part because she was a realtor. We, we were told that it was an in-law. It was a, it was a certified in-law. So it was a single family with a certified in-law. Yes. Cause on the, on the blueprint here that you submitted, it says right on it, existing, uh, I took eight that bed, right off of bedroom, the um, eight bedroom, two family house. That's what it says. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm sorry, interrupt. Anybody else have questions of Mr. Gillis here? So basically, the buyers just want to make sure this is a, a, a is a, a a real is existing in law, so they don't have to. From what they were told by their lenders, that they were going to have to tear the kitchen out if it wasn't. So. Was there ever a special permit for this? We never we never applied for a special permit because we were grandfathered in. We were always told we were grandfathered in because it was it was this this in law was existing before the town changed its bylaws in two thousand one. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have a um, letter here from December of two thousand and eight, and it's from Tom Milius, who was the building inspector at the time. And it says, please be advised that the property listed below has been inspected and the building inspector verifies that the in-law apartment is currently in place 
in a viable apartment, however, not currently occupied. No special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals is in place for this unit as it predates the bylaw. And it's uh, dated from the building inspector December 2008? December 4th, 2008 for 22 Colby Drive. Excuse but Mr. Gillis, Gillis. You, had, you had immediate family members living there. You, you yes, the whole time. Three different sets. So yeah. we, we did have some spaces where there was some, it was not uh, being occupied at the time, but that was that was because there was either a death or uh, there was a transaction, a transition period. It was never it was never unoccupied for any amount of time. Does that answer your question, there, Bob? Yes. Yeah. Pete or uh, Jerry Kasaya, Dan, you have any questions? Is there a firewall? So I guess is are these completely separate units? Yeah, different so different no, foundation. So there's no entryway between the two at all. Is there a firewall between the two units? Uh, there's two separate walls. Yes, I I don't know what's in between it, but there is a there is a bit of separation. You can't see through it. You you have separate septic systems? Yes. And separate heating systems? Yes. The only thing that's together is the water. So it's classified as a duplex, right? This this was existing when we bought it. What what the town when you bought it, you bought it as a duplex or you bought it as a We bought it as an in law. That's the way we purchased it. I had a sister in law living over here and we were in the big house. We were in the main house. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I'm looking at the property card from the assessor's office right now. Yeah, me right. I and, was doing the same thing. Just okay, and it right. does say in-law apartment, grandfather, separate residence. Is attached separate residence. Uh, one half bath is in the basement of the main house. Yeah. So do they do you share a, a, a basement, Mr. Gillis? Or is there in the main a, house? There's a, uh, there's a basement. Yes. Is and there's a basement in the in-law. Yes. Is there a passageway through to the no. basement? So no. So the yeah. only thing did then is the uh, electrical. And, uh, and, and no, the only thing that shared is the water. The water. The water. Dan, mm -hmm. any other questions? The apartment built. No, I mean it looks like it's it's all grandfathered in to me. I it, so. I'm not sure what the grandfathered piece is. If 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 there's a separate unit in a house prior to the the 2003 in-law bylaw, it just is basically a multifamily, which they need a special permit for anyway. So I don't well, think that's anything. Well, that's why the I'm only thing, the only, Pete, the only thing I, I can see is uh, it, looking at the picture, like Dan had just pointed out, uh, it doesn't look like there's shared living space. Uh, it it has its it there's no shared entrance way. They have two separate houses in the front. I don't, I don't know if you can see the uh, the picture there. Oh yeah. And uh, and it's a uh, like uh, like Dan said it was a uh, pre-existing prior to prior to the zoning change. So. Uh, but, but I guess that's my point. So if if it's not an in-law before in-laws were allowed in 2003 or whenever that was passed, it basically qualified as multifamily and they need a special permit anyway, because you can't have two units on the same lot of the duplex, right? But uh, prior to the to the change in, in the bylaw, Pete, I think uh, they didn't have to have shared living space. They didn't have to have, uh, you know, their own shared entranceway. Uh, like you said, there's a set, none of the utilities were shared other than the water. It, they did. I think. I believe that all came up. I don't know. It was either two thousand one or two thousand three. Wh wh whatever it happened to be. Well, yeah. Be before that, you couldn't do any of that and have an in-law. You you would have to get a multifamily or a duplex special permit, right? I wasn't around, but I would assume like you you couldn't have an in-law at all. And I think they passed that to allow you the opportunity to have an in-law and not have to get a multifamily permit, right? So I don't I don't know what. No, I think they allow. Yeah. I think they allowed in-laws. Yeah, they allowed. Oh, okay. By special permit. 
and, and like uh it wasn't until 2003 that you started requiring that every five years space. That, they're, okay. that they do re redo the application. So that makes sense. Okay. I think that's why originally Pete, they told them that if uh, it wasn't occupied, it'd have to take the kitchen out or something, which okay, I think that makes was sense. the right. old, the old bylaw that if there wasn't an immediate family member there, the kitchen had to be removed or something. That's why, uh, you know, uh, Kasaya, as we mentioned before in past petitions, you know, they were, we were looking for a six foot opening. So there was quote unquote, the shared living space, but I don't think there was a requirement prior to 2001. Jerry, any questions? Bob, you have any questions? Uh, I think I uh, he, he's got to renew this year every five years anyhow. So he should understand that when you're selling the house, the new owners, I uh, have to make another request every five years just to uh, keep it going. You just can't live there forever and not, not let anybody know about it. Well, Mr. Gillis did point out, too, that he, he's under the understanding that the new owners of the house will also have a immediate family member there. It wouldn't be used as, as a rental apartment, you know, or, or a duplex or a two-family. But... Uh, Again, that's under no control of Mr. Gillis, you know, at this point. I mean, what what the town would need to do if you wanted to renew it every five years, I, I've been told they used to have to come in and do an application, but now it's just goes before the zoning board and, and you just pass it, right? Every five years? We just, pa no, we never passed everything. For, and so that would make, in, in what 2016 we we had no application on on uh no 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 i i was i was always told that since we were grandfathered and we didn't we weren't required to put an application in it wasn't until people put in um in-laws because i've talked with um the uh debonas bob debona when they put their in-law in they were required to every five years to reapply for that for that uh in-law well, that's a good question. Uh, anybody have an answer to that? I don't. Uh, we were never told that. In we, prior to the change in, of zoning. In the, if in the 30 years we were here. There, prior to uh, when the uh, bylaw was changed in 2003, if in fact any, it wouldn't come under the five-year st uh, stipulation. Right. How do the board members feel about that? Hold on, Mr. Gillis. I'll call you. Right. Sure. Jerry, Pete, Bob. Um, to me, it almost sound, it sounds like it's a duplex. Um, if you call it in law, do you vary all the zoning bylaws, or how does it work? Because technically, to me, it sounds like a duplex. Yeah, it sounds like a duplex since they changed the the, the bylaw. Right. You, you know, but like you said, if it, if it met all the criteria, he was he was issued not Mr. Gillis, but the previous owner. Uh, was was issued a uh, in-law apartment based on the conditions in the set of requirements back there in what 1984-85, and it sounded like the building inspector also, uh, uh, Mr. Milius had done some research on it, and in fact, it does show on the assessor's card and in, on his letter dated December fourth that it, it was in fact uh, an in-law, so it must have met the requirements of when. You know the whatever they were back then. Right. I mean, we got a couple of these. I think there's another one on Hayward Street or something where they were built. Like they got the building permit, so obviously when they built the right. house, it was allowed, right? So right. It, something is missing somewhere in this that it it seems like. And I it and seems, but that's what I've drawn into. Yeah, like some. I don't know. It it seems. It, and and arguably, I think we'd rather him have a, an in law oh, yeah. approved. And, and try and have him come back and have a duplex and uh, rent that out. That's what it says. May or may not have. Yeah. So. But I think it's a legal question. I don't even know if he has to have it approved because of when it was done. Well, I think yeah, he has to come back for the five years now, right? I don't know. Yeah, that's well, he doesn't have question. anything on the books, so I think he has to have something at this point. That's what well, I think. No, what, why? He was he did it to code and to bylaws at the time. Oh, well, whoever built it did it. I, I that's just a, it's a legal question. I. My, my gut feeling is no, they don't have to do anything. Right. I, I, 
I agree with uh, Dan. I, I think he's uh, he right as long as he met the requirements back when it was really originally constructed and well prior to 2003, 19, 1985, I believe is what uh, Mr. Gillis said that uh, it wouldn't be indicated by the letter from Mr. Milius, the building inspector, or the assessor's office has it assessed at that point. So, uh, what? Uh, where do we go from here, uh, Jerry or Kasai? Any questions you you guys have of Mr. Gillis? No. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board? Uh, do we uh, need to do a site inspection on this, or do I have a motion to waive the site inspection? I make a motion to waive the on-site. Second. Do I have a second? I'm sorry? I'm se second. All right, there's a, a motion and a second on the floor to uh, waive the site inspection for uh, uh, petition number 940. I'll call for a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. Uh, Kasaya? Yes. Uh, Pete? Yes. Bob? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Myself, yes. Dan? Yes. Thank you. Uh, it passes. We waive the site inspection five zero to zero. Okay. Uh, now I'll uh, accept the motion uh, regarding petition number nine forty. Any, anybody else have any questions? Any? Yeah, it, it 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 seems to me like I think we should we should approve this for two reasons. One, I think that prior to the the twenty eighteen change. It was with the owner and not with the land, so I think that that in this case might be might be good for us to approve this. And secondly, I think it, it will put this on the five year cycle, and we'll be able to kind of you know have that on a on a re recurring basis. What's that? Right. All, all right. I I agree with you, Pete. Uh, anybody else, Bob? You want any comments? I agree with Peter. Now, will he receive a letter that he needs to reapply? Jerry uh, or Kasaya, how do you feel on this? It seems to fall into that that um, time frame, so yes, I agree with it. Kasaya, you all good? I'm good. All right, then I'll uh, accept the motion uh, regarding uh, petition number 940. I'll make a motion to uh, accept petition number 940. Jerry, do we need to put in a condition of a five, of the five year limit on this, or do you just we, want to? We should because it should be uh, regulated now. So, with the uh, that would have so, to be uh, re re reapply for every five years. Okay, so the motion on the floor then is to uh, accept petition number nine forty as presented, with the stipulation that it would be renewable during five on a five year basis. Correct. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second uh, to accept petition number 940 uh, as presented with the uh, five-year renewable stipulation. Uh, I'll call for a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. Uh, Kasaya? Yes. Peter? Yes. Uh, Bob? Yes. Uh, Jerry? Yes. Myself is yes, and Dan? Yes. Okay, the, uh, the petition passes five zero to zero. Uh, Mr. Gillis, you can uh, give uh, Alana a call at the zoning board office tomorrow and, and she'll uh, give you the process of uh, where you go from here. Okay, well, the, the thing is that it's, it's already, the closing is already in the process. Um, they close Friday. So um, technically I don't really own this house anymore, but uh, that's what the, they they pushed it through for some reason. Yeah, tell me about that one. <laughs> they passed. They passed last Friday or this Friday. They they passed this past Friday. To to be honest, it, it's it's with the land, not the owner. So it's just going to transfer with it. So it's on the property. So I think it's not going to matter in the end. What right? what I want, what I want to make sure is that the new owners are aware of this. That's that's how would how would that go about. Uh, give him a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be living next to him for a couple of months, actually. So, um, okay. Put it this way: Do they get letters? Do letters go out when they have to reapply? 
Uh, yes. Alana, did the letters go out? I thought they did. Yes. Um, if they're renewable every five years, a letter, like a reminder letter will go out. Okay. All right. Because we never got one. <laughs> That's the so thing. We never had one. Right. Because <laughs> there, was, there wasn't one, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Gillis. Right. Uh, onward and upward. You're, like I said, give Alana a call tomorrow and she'll uh, walk you through the process. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Jerry, what were you saying about the easy ones? What were you saying? Yeah, I, I didn't quite hear you, Jerry. Could you repeat that, Jerry? Yeah, I won't say it again. <laughs> <laughs> You just cursed us. I hope you <laughs> Oh, wow. Look at that. Right on the button. 910. Okay. Let's, oh, we're flying now. Uh, moving on to petition number 941. Uh, Gary and Stacy Ballard, are they with us? Gary? Yes, I'm right here. Hi, Stacy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. All right. Let me uh, let me kick this off, and we'll get it going. The Halifax Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Monday, May third, two thousand twenty-one, at nine ten p.m. via Zoom on the application by Gary and Stacy Blad for a special permit to renovate the existing structure uh, to build an eight foot by ten foot addition, adding a porch to the rear of the structure and a six foot by eight foot front porch to be located at 63 Carver Street, Halifax, Mass, 02338. Said property is owned by Gary and Stacy Villard of 270 Franklin Street, Halifax, Mass, 02338, as shown on the Tessus map 71-10, lot 71-10, uh, book 45456, page 176. The applicant is seeking a special permit to renovate the existing structure to build an eight foot by 10 foot addition to square off the back side of the structure, adding a porch to the rear of the structure in a six by eight foot front porch, which would constitute a continuation of a non-conforming use, section 167-8A. The renovation work is valued at more than 50% of the valuation of the building, section 167-8B, and an extension of a non-conforming use, section 167-8C. This project would also require a variance of the front setback from 50 feet to 31 feet in accordance with the Halifax, with the town of Halifax, zoning bylaw section 167-11, table of dimens dimensional and density regulations of the code of town of Halifax. Area is zoned business, petition number 941. Okay. Everybody got the uh, the uh, floor plan and the progress uh, thing on what we're doing here. So, Stacy, where are you? I'm right here. Stacy, why don't you tell us a, a little bit now? Uh, if you just want to go through, is it just the uh, front porch that you're adding on, or is there an addition? and a front porch being added on. It's an ad addition off the back, which is going to square off the back of the house. And then there's going to be a small front porch um, so, on the front side of the house that's going to go closer to the street. <clears throat> but the only thing that we're putting off, um, adding on, the addition on the back is going to be an eight by 10 addition. It's just going to basically square off the house. Oh, so it's, it's not, uh, you know, you don't need a, a variance off the back. No. Right? Is the front porch uh, actual living space or is it like a farmer's porch? If you No, no, it's just going to be something you walk out your front door just so you have a little landing and then stairs to go down to a driveway front yard type of thing. Stacey, is, is it enclosed or is it an open porch? No, it's an open porch. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see what else we need. Gentlemen, anyone have any questions uh, regarding the uh, renovation more than 
since we just went through this on our last uh, on our last uh, petition, what was it from last month, if we recall? Anybody have any questions of the uh, of the applicant? No. Is there are there maps of the like where it's going on the lot? We have that. I mean, I'm, maybe I'm missing it. Yeah, they, they should be in there, Peter. There should they? be. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It sits on two point two two acres. Is, is that is that the one you're looking at, Pete? Yeah, I got it now. Yeah, it clicked down. <laughs> Questions, Pete? Stacy, is this going to be a, a residential slash business? How's that working? Um, the eventually, when we finish doing renovations, we're um, going to be uh, moving into there um, at some point ourselves. So it'll be our own residence. And you won't be living on Franklin Street anymore. No, we'll be putting Franklin Street up for sale at some point. Okay, I'm just reading here the uh, denial letter from uh, the building inspector, constituted okay. continuation. Pete, do you remember, how, how does that go with the, uh, remember we checked it with Amy Quessel on that last one, that the, uh, the renovation does not include any re renovations to the interior of the house? Yeah, I'm trying to find that right now. Here we go. Yeah, she gave us some kind of finding on that, I believe. So what you, I think what she basically said was that we can give a special permit to do that, is what I think we did. And we did that. Actually, we didn't do that with, uh, what was it, Montpensin Street. We gave him the variances instead of approving the special permit. If I remember correctly. Am I, am I remembering that right? Because we had the choice between the two. Yeah, we were going round and round about that. Yeah. Where he said, it, she said that you, you couldn't include any renovations to the interior to qualify or to affect the 50% rule. Is that right? Do I understand that? Did I understand that correctly? I don't remember that part. I mean, she very well knew there was a lot going on in that meeting, if I remember. Fair to say. Yeah, I think so. Rob, I think you were asking questions to Bob about that. Do you remember what Amy had said mm -hmm. as far as the, you know, the 50% uh, renovation requirement? I don't recall. Dan, I'm holding you fully responsible. <laughs> He'll remember. <laughs> I don't. Oh. Um, but I do have a question. Where is where is the uh, plan that shows the 50 feet to the 31 feet? I, I'm not seeing it. Stacey, is that included? Um, there was a um, another. There's another um, application at the same time that we put in, and it might be on that one. The very next one, it's got a whole site plan. And it is on that one. I don't think it shows it for the house on that one either, just the uh, proposed building. Can we get that up on the screen somehow, Bert? Alana, can you uh, throw that up there? I'm sorry, which one is it? Hmm? This the is site, uh, the site plan. One of the four? No, I don't think so. It's a different one other than the first four. It's site plan number one, I think. Okay, hold on one second. I, I don't know if Caesar gave me the sharing capabilities, but I'll give it a shot. So it shows the setbacks of the proposed building, but not of the house. Right. I'm looking for the... Of, of the they're house. asking for a variance from 50 feet to 31, if I'm reading it incorrectly. And I, I, don't see any, I don't see any setbacks for the house. Right. Um, the, yeah, the house was 37. 
ten and a half feet off, and with putting the uh, the front porch on, it would make it okay. The house is over on the. You can see where it says driveway or house existing, but it doesn't tell you how far off it is. I think it's only 37 and a half feet off. Um, the I thought I included it. The petition is asking for 31 feet. Right, with putting a... So do we have a drawing or a plan with all those dimensions on there? Uh, I did have I did have Joe Webby do one up, and I thought I had included it, but I, um, if I don't I don't see it either. Because right now, if it's thirty seven feet from Carver Street, Stacy, you're going, you're asking for thirty one, so it's a a six foot front porch. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Joe, do you have anything available to? You? I, I do not here at home, no, but uh, we, we did provide um, the set of plans that, that Alana just put up there, but then there's another 11 by 17 that just shows the, uh, the dwelling uh, that we did give to Stacy. I, I don't know what happened to it after that. No, I have it. I thought I had included it. My apologies. Do you have it at home, Stacy? Um, I, I do. Um, I have no idea how to. <laughs> well, you just show it, just put it in front of the picture, in front of the camera. Oh, okay. Hold on one second. Let me grab a hold of it here. If I have it printed, I may still have it on my computer. Stacy, if you have it on your computer, you can send it to me. And I can share it. Um, yeah. Sure, if you bear with me for one second, I apologize. screen and does that bring it up or what? I don't know. Does it not show it to me? In the meantime, I looked up uh, Amy's uh, email from the other time. So she, what she wrote was, um, She said, it's my understanding the building inspector interprets, interprets 167.8b as allowing an alteration of over 50% provided a special permit is granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and that was what we kind of talked about last time as as the, the shaky part. I think, I, so looking at the alteration, it's the the alteration of the non-conforming use, which would probably just be, we, this is holding us back from, from people fixing their properties, right? Um, I mean, the, the non-conforming structure, the alteration really, we don't talk about the inside of houses. The alteration you could look right. at as the porch, right? That's the right. alteration of the non-conforming use is the porch. And the believe the, Peter, the Peters, I recall the two, it, it's beyond the scope of, of the Zoning Board of Appeals as far as the interior goes. I agree. If I, if I recall what um, uh, Amy Quessel had, had made mention prior to that, we, it's beyond our scope, you know, of what that involves. Uh, I think I emailed it to you. I sent it to you. But I gotta, I'm currently out of the office reply. Um, you sent me the email, but there's no attachment. Oh, for crying out loud. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> uh, the only other thing, uh, you know, what Amy just mentioned that she had made reference to uh, petition 942, which is the next one. Uh, are they going to need a, a special permit for a mixed use where they're going to have a uh, residential slash business uh, 
run from the property because that is not included in uh, in this petition uh, 941, which is before us right now. Are the two parcels separated? What's that? I'm sorry. Are yeah. the two parcels separated? No, it's one. One is uh, business. It's just showing one 2.2 acre parcel, Kasaya. If I read it correctly, everybody else, Pete, you see it the same way, Bob? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Jerry? Yeah, and then there's a home business, but that's not what we're talking about here, right? I mean, that's a different one. We should wait and I guess we'll talk about that separately. Well, uh, actually, w with, without this uh, uh, site plan in, in front of us, uh, it's basically what we're talking right now is an, it's an incomplete application. And uh, just, to be honest with you, to, to follow up on, on uh, petition 942, uh, once again, as we mentioned to the, uh, the previous two petitioners, the uh, site plan review has not been submitted to the uh, planning board uh, as required in the Halifax bylaws uh, prior to the uh, review of a special permit. Look at you, Alana, all high tech and everything. <laughs> yep, learning something new. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so then, <clears throat> so that that would show. Oh. So still, so they're, the, the, the they're only foot. asking for four feet. There's only a four foot difference. Actually, six foot. Oh From yeah, thirty-seven late. to thirty-one. <laughs> but it must late. be. I I don't know how old the, the house actually. If I recall it correctly, it's, it's pretty old. It was there prior to zoning because it shows the the 50 foot setback there yet uh stacy how big is the front porch just six by eight uh yes i believe that's what i put down on there yes yes Alan, oh, it, let me see. Mr. Diaz, you want to jump in here? Did you have something to uh, bring up? Um, Caesar, could you let Alan Diaz in or unmute him? Sure can. Let's see. All right, I just asked him to unmute. He should get some sort of notification. There he goes. You're all set. Mr. Chairman, did you have a question for me? Well, yeah, I saw you come up on my screen. I, I didn't know uh, uh, there was no site plan review as far as the uh, the mixed use goes here on the property. Uh, I don't believe it was submitted to the uh, to the planning board per se. Uh, what what about the uh, existing septic system? Has that been approved by the board of health for the for this dwelling? Um. To my knowledge, the prep tests were done, and I'm, I'm assuming they, they'll be putting, they'll be submitting some new septic plans uh, for both the existing dwelling and the new proposed structure. I, I just want to go back to one second, one comment you made about a mixed use. Uh, right. In Halifax, you're allowed to have the residential use in a business zone. I'm not sure that the fact that it's existing, it becomes a mixed use. Uh, that's something you guys will have to determine. And, and again, as as the um, as you said, uh, there is no site plan on this parcel. So the map the plan that I see now shows the existing structure. I don't see a plan that shows the proposed whole building. That's probably another plan. Um, but having said that, you again you would need site plan approval for the proposed new pole building. Ellen, I would agree with you on that. If, if, if this was just a residential structure in a business zone, however, 
a following petition like you were just referring to as far as the site plan review goes. The application is for uh, uh, for equipment in a business. So there's, that's where I believe the mixed use comes in. Now you're going to have a residential structure and a residential use on the same 2.22 acres that's going to be shared with the quote unquote business in the storage of equipment. So that's, that's why I was bringing up the mixed use. Okay. I personally don't know it in our bylaws that there is a mixed use provision, but that I'd have to defer that to you guys. You are more familiar with, with that. In um, so just to address the subject, I believe, I know they've done perk tests, so I'm assuming they'll come in with a design. And again, it's a site plan. I mean, they are going to need, and I believe I did see some plans that had um, the building and some drainage. Um, so it sounds to me like this petition probably got filed um, just prematurely as far as the pole building. Uh, and it was filed, I, I don't know, is this on the same application or is there a different application for the pole building? Uh, it's showing the pole building on petition, a different app, a petition, 942, okay. which is a 60 by 100 foot pole barn for equipment in a business to store and process wood. Okay. Um. And again, as far as uh, my, my latest knowledge and my discussions and whatnot, there has been no site plan approval for that uh, as we speak. Correct. Uh, I would think, Mr. Chairman, though, you could probably act on the um, this original petition. It would be the second petition that uh, you probably couldn't take any action on. We could act on this without any type of septic system being presented to the uh, Board of Health at this point. I mean, that's your call. Um, I don't know where they are as far as the building permit process, but that would have been reviewed by the health agent. So under these circumstances where you probably got an existing structure, the, the health agent would have signed off on the building permit, but they would not allow any occupancy until such time as a septic plan was in approved. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, building inspection's letter of denial makes no mention of that. And okay, so no permit has been issued. So I guess they're in a catch twenty two position. If you're looking for a septic design, it would be premature because if they can't add on to the house, um, then I'm sure they're going to withdraw the petition, not add on to the house, and then come back with a septic design. So I, I don't know that I'd be off overly concerned. Um, there's no question they're going to have to do a new septic. Um, and I don't know that your board would have to condition it on a new septic. I no, I 100% I, I agree on that. Right. I think if you granted them the relief they needed, um, then their next step would be to submit uh, uh, septic plans. Bert, in some of our previous conversations with uh, Amy Keswell, the septic system is not in our purview. Right. We don't, right. It's, we don't, have, we don't have to look at that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So Bob, my, my, my next question is that Bob, how, how would we move on this with you know, petition, as, as Stacy referred to, petition 942 on, on the very next petition. So to there's, me, no site, a, there's no site a, plan review. That's a separate peti petition that requires site plan review. Then we should discuss it when we're discussing that petition. This is a separate petition. It's a residential house looking to rebuild it. So I think we should act on this petition. And then the next petition, we deal with the site plan with that. But I, I think we can act on this. All right. Well, how, how do you feel about the uh, the, the renovation, the fifty percent renovation? Um, I've driven by the property, and I think it could definitely use a renovation. I think it would 
certainly be an improvement. <laughs> Is there anybody living in there now? No. No, <laughs> there's not. <laughs> not in two legs, anyhow. <laughs> Are you chatting with them? Yes. All right. Uh, Jerry or uh, Kasaya, Pete, what are your thoughts? I think it's, I, I don't think there's a problem with the 50%. As I mentioned before, I don't think you can do much today without without getting into those kind of costs. I, I also wish that we had a clearer bylaw. Like it, it, there might be something we want to talk about for for next town meeting or two town meetings from now. But like if we had a very clear line that said, if you're renovating a property, just get a special permit and we'll approve it. Like that's if, for a non-conforming structure that would make it so much easier. But now we're kind of bending stuff to get there. And, and to be honest, like I, I think, I think this is totally reasonable. Like I, I don't think they're really asking for a porch and to renovate a building that the town probably wants to see renovated. So I, I don't have a problem with it at all. I just wish it was just more. Something and that might be as a board, we might want to talk about that, trying to submit something to town meeting at some point. Because this keeps happening. It's going to keep happening as people keep running stuff. All right. All right. Uh, I'll open it up to uh, any other uh, questions from members of you uh, from the community. If you want to uh, raise your hand, uh, uh, Caesar will uh, unmute your mic and you can certainly uh, address the board. We have no questions on the, that property. Just I'm like sorry? fixing it fixed. I need, first, I need your name and where you're from. Where do you live? Your address? Us? Yeah. There, it's Aldine McGee, Richard Nolan, 50 Cava. Okay. And, and what would you like to say to the board? Um, I have no problems with that fixing the house. Our main concern is the work after this, the next permit that you're going to discuss. Okay, thank you. Anybody else like to make a comment? I see Linda on there. It just comes up as Linda. I don't know. You have to, uh, Caesar, could you uh, unmute them, please? Am I muting Linda? Yes, please. Uh, yes. Yep. All set. I need your name, please, and your address. Linda Parent, 54 Carver Street. Okay. Um, yeah, I think um, the house fixing it up is uh, big improvement. a big improvement. You know? <laughs> because, uh, you know, Sam lived there all those years, and it's, you know, it's... I live there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's not good. No, we're just concerned about the barn. <clears throat> Uh, oh, the barn in the back. Oh, but well, that's that, no, the that's barn they want to put up. That's, that's, oh, our, that's our next pe petition. Yeah. This, this one here in front of us is just a just the house. Of, yeah, of, the of, house. Great. No, yeah, no, I have no problem with that. We have no problem with that. Fix it up. It'd be an improvement. It'd be an, a real good improvement. Yeah. Do you think it would uh, uh, add to the uh, property values in the area if they fixed it up and? Yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah, right. definitely. Okay. Uh, it's the rest no. of it. <laughs> Caesar, could you just mute the the other one, please, so we don't have people jumping all over each other? Thank you. Uh, okay, thank Linda. Thank you very much. That's all you come up on my screen is Linda. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, anybody uh, else out there? Caesar, do you have anyone else asking or requesting to speak? I am not. No one's raising their hands, and I haven't seen any comments come in. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, gentlemen, what's the uh, pleasure of the board? Uh, I think, uh, I, I think the, the property itself has, has done a drastic change in, say, the last three weeks uh, from certainly what was there. Uh, I don't know uh, if everybody's familiar with it, uh, would like to do a site inspection, take a look, especially where it involves, you know, two separate petitions here, or what's the pleasure of the board? I've driven past. I'm familiar with the property. Jerry, Kasaya, Pete. I'm no, oh, fine. Thank. 
How about you, Dan? Where are you? Um, I think I'm here. Uh, the, um, um, if we if we waive the site inspection for this petition, we still could require one for the next petition, correct? Yes. Okay, so yeah, for this one, I, I don't think we need a... The, the only thing I'm, I'm thinking, Dan, is if, if we uh, go out and do a site inspection, we'd kill two birds with one stone. We, we wouldn't have to, you, you know, get a better idea of what's involved on the property. Yeah, I guess if you wanted to talk about both of them while we're no, all there, no. I, you, you know, we're limited to what we can talk about, correct? I, because uh, I don't know myself, I think we definitely want to see what, what kind of business is going to be involved back there with the, but again, that involves down the road. I think that's but on the next petition. Right, so you're saying be, because of that, don't waive it on this one either? I'm just saying you could waive it on this one and then want to have a site inspection on the next petition, but then that would limit the scope of what we could talk about too. We couldn't talk about the porch and if we waive this site inspection and then we went there for the next petition, we couldn't talk about the porches, right? Is that correct? Am I, am I right about that? Well, waiving this site inspection, you can move this petition along versus oh. we can visit the site because. Right. But because the visit with there's more three, three more members there, it's a meeting. And we just, you know, if we want to be able to talk about everything, we shouldn't waive this one is all I'm saying. If we waive it and we go forward and approve it, there's no more discussion anyways. Good point. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much more there, I don't know how more, much more there is for me to know about this petition to, to feel okay voting for it. So yeah, that, my initial question I, was I waiving, waiving this does not stop us from the next petition. They're two separate. Correct. Oh, that was my initial question. Okay. Okay. Well, then, uh, uh, do we have any more questions regarding the renovation thing or whatnot? Because that, that's part of the, uh, the petition here is that we're, we're waiving that 50% rule. Well, so they asked for a special permit, right? Didn't they, I think, and, and that's what Amy said in her email to us on the last one is that, um, we can grant special permits. I wish it said it very clearly in there because I remember that now I'm remembering the conversation she said. And the, the reason that Rob and Amy made that, that we can grant a special permit is actually not in that section at all because it doesn't make mention to it at all. So it kind of says in A, A, B, and C that you can't grant a special permit in any scenario when there's an alteration. But both Rob and Amy said uh, that like based on 167.21, which grants authority to the zoning board, we can grant special permit. I I think it's worth looking at long term because I it's a little it's a little gray, but um, but she did say that. So and and like I I think we could in this case if if we're looking at this as we can we can grant special permits to to allow people to alter with greater than 50% market value, then, then we'd, we'd review every single one anyway. So, right. you know, and in this case, it seems pretty, I mean, even the abutters are in favor of it. And it, it right. Yeah, coming down pretty to pretty much six by eight but, torch, but, uh, you renovation know? would, would <laughs> certainly be an improvement. Yeah. I agree. And that's almost all of these that come yeah. in front of us. It's, you know, so. Okay, well then, uh, what's the pleasure of the board? I'll accept the motion if uh, somebody would like to waive the site inspection or do you, or, uh, do you want to schedule a site inspection? It's up to the members. I'll make a motion to waive the on-site. Second. There's second. a motion on the floor to waive the uh, on-site. Do I have a second? Second. All right, there's a motion and a second uh, to waive the on-site. I'll uh, call for a, a voice vote, Kasaya. Yes. Pete? Yes. Bob? Yes. Jerry? Yes. And uh, I vote no. So it uh, passes uh, four to one to zero. Dan, your opinion? I would say no myself, only because of the whole situation. Okay. But if All right, so uh, motion passes to, uh, to waive the on-site. Uh, any uh, further discussion? Anything else, gentlemen, we want to talk about, or uh, we'll accept a, a motion regarding uh, uh, petition uh, nine forty-one. 
like to make a motion for petition 941 as presented. I'll second. Okay, there's a motion on the floor uh, to accept petition uh, 941 uh, as presented. Uh, once again, all those in favor say aye. I'll call for a voice vote. Kasaya? Yes. Uh, Pete? Yes. Uh, Bob? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Uh, myself, I vote no. Uh, Dan, on your opinion, please. We're just voting on the on this petition in the porch, I would say yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, motion, uh, it passes uh, four to one. So, uh, Stacy, you can uh, give a line of call in the morning uh, or at your earliest convenience, and uh, she'll uh, walk you through the, the process over there. Okay, thank you. All right. If uh, you can hang around, Stacy, we'll move right into uh, petition number uh, 942. Yep. Let me. Uh, 942. The uh, Halifax Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 3rd, 2021 at 9.20 p.m. via Zoom on the application by Gary and Stacy Vlad for a special permit to construct a 60 by 100 foot pole barn to store equipment and to have a business to store and process wood located at 63 Carver Street, Halifax, Mass, 02338. Uh, said property is owned by Gary and Stacy Ballard of 270 Franklin Street, Halifax, Mass. 02338 is shown on the assessor's map 71-10, lot 71-10, book 45456, page 176. The applicant is seeking a special permit to construct a 60 by 100 foot uh, pole barn to store equipment and to have a business to store and process wood in accordance with the uh, town of Halifax zoning bylaw excuse me, exception, uh, section 167-7C, table of use res regulations, area or zone business, petition 942. So Stacy, oh, thank you, Caesar. Stacy, can you uh, tell us uh, what the business is going to involve down here? Um, we are a, a small uh, landscape, uh, actually more property maintenance and uh, small uh, tree tree company. Um, Gary's been uh, in this town for over 30 years doing this business, um, but we're, we're not a large company, um, but we're looking for a place to have our house and our business in the same place. Um, we uh, we uh, operate nine to five Monday through Friday. Um, what he's looking to do is he does sell some firewood so we do need to um, have a permit to process that firewood. Um, when you say process the firewood, Stacy, what does that involve? Cut and split. That's it? Cut it and split it. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Did That's you? okay. Yep. Uh, when you say uh, landscaping, is that like a nursery also selling... No, all, that's why I said it's mainly um, property maintenance. We take care of Twin Lakes condominiums and we basically mow their lawns, trim their shrubs, uh, and we don't sell anything other than the firewood out of, uh, um, we don't sell anything as far as landscaping supplies. We don't do a nursery. We don't sell flowers. We don't sell mulch. We don't do anything like that. Um, I come in, basically it's myself and one other person. I come in, I get my equipment at nine o'clock in the morning. I leave, I come back at five o'clock and we're done. Um, so it's basically lawn mowers and, um, that type of equipment. It's a property maintenance. Okay. I guess my next question is then how does that involve the mixed use guys, members of the board? Would there be a residence and a business in a business zone? Question the property for Amy. Has, a, has a mixed use as residential slash business. Question for Amy. I say, it's a, I say it's a question for Bob. <laughs> I have a question for you then, Bert. <laughs> Who brought up site plan? Uh oh. Okay. Has a site plan been done? 
no, that's that's number two. Uh, there is no site plan review uh, that's been submitted at this point. So again, like the previous uh, petitions, uh, according to the Halifax zoning bylaws, the uh, site plan review has to be submitted and approved prior to it coming for a uh, uh, special permit here in the Zoning Board of Appeals. So with that, uh, Stacy, have you applied for one yet or is it? Is I actually just realized this morning that I needed to do that, unfortunately. Um, this is all very new to me. Um, so I'm learning as I go along. And as far as um, apparently I did one step out of order. Um, <laughs> So uh, I, I have to go in and pick up a application to put it in front of the planning board um, in which I was unaware that I needed to do that first before this. So I apologize for that. No, no problem. Uh, but Stacy, I don't know if you heard actually uh, with the prior petitions, the uh, site plan review isn't an overnight submit the application, get a decision the next day. Uh, no, nope. I am aware of that. <laughs> we had, uh, uh, we had, by advice of town council, uh, was re requesting that they give the applicant uh, 60 days to, uh, to do the whole process because it, it is rather involved to get the site plan review, to have it in hand and comply with the Halifax bylaw, you know, to come before the zoning board. So if you'd like... Uh, I'd like to continue the uh, uh, hearing for petition number uh, 942 until, again, that date, uh, 60 days, which would be our Alana July 12th meeting. July 12th at 735. 735. Uh, so uh, unless uh, any other board members... <laughs> I really don't see us uh, really going through uh, asking a whole lot of questions until we have all the ducks in a row. Unless the gentlemen want to move further, we'll just uh, continue the hearing for petition uh, 942 until then. So, so, Burke, in the meantime, can we contact town council and ask them about the mixed use? I think that would be a great idea. Yeah, I think... So I, I think this, so you would need a special permit for a residential in a, in a business district, but it's, it's, it's a no, non-conforming no. use, right? No, Pete, I don't think you'd need a special permit. To, uh, a residential is allowed in a business district, and this is zone business. By okay. right, you can, put a, you can put a residence in a business district. Oh, right, oh, right, 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 right. The other way around would... Yeah, the, the, I think the big question, and, and Rob refers to it in his letter, is whether or not this is not actually a commercial use; it's a light industrial use. And if that's the case, uh, this might this this might run into some serious issues there because I don't think you can get a special permit um, for some of the stuff. I'm looking at the the chart here. I think it's going to be a an awful lot of questions. I absolutely agree with you and i think town council would be yep. uh, ideal for us to yep. uh, i agree consult with on that but in the meantime uh i would uh, need a, a motion to uh continue uh, he the hearing on petition 942 uh for the 60 day uh period uh and resume at 735 uh on uh, july 12th 2021 if one of you gentlemen would like to make a motion Make a motion for petition 942 to continue it to our July 12th meeting at 735. And do I have a second? Second. Okay, I'm going to need a, a voice vote. Uh, Kasaya? Yes. Uh, Jerry? Yes. Bob? Yes. Pete? Yes. Dan? Yes. And myself? Yes. So this hearing will be continued uh, until uh, July 12th at 735. Okay, Stacy. thank you. All right, so I, uh, I guess I should uh, put the uh, actual building on a real hold, huh? Until <laughs> uh, we get everything. Yeah, I think that would probably be a good idea, to be honest with you. All right, excellent. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
All right, Alana, what else do we have? Um, I think adjourn. Adjourn, adjourn. We did the policies. <laughs> uh, we Oh, yes, the receipts. We got it all done. How about a motion to adjourn? Make a motion adjourn. to adjourn. And do I have a second? Second. Is a motion and a second on the floor to adjourn? A voice vote, Kasaya? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Bob? Yes. Pete? Yes. Myself, yes. Dan, unless you want to stay, Dan, I know you do. <laughs> he needs to make up some minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's like the tension. <laughs> that's right. I'm not going to stay, but he can. <laughs> All right. Motion carries. Good night, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank, yeah, you. thank you, Caesar. Thanks, Caesar.